Oh, the background of 3D printing right now, it's, uh, it's a ground-based application. Uh, there's several uh, printers out here. They range in cost and quality to uh, you know, things that can make production parts that can go on aircraft to things that you don't want to you know, drink up. But uh, right now, it's, it's ground-based, and it can print things from plastics, from polymers, uh, composites, and uh, they do aluminum alloys, titanium even, and uh, the technology is progressing relatively fast. You can print a lot of things, uh, tools. We actually printed an uh, open ended wrench, as, uh, as Google uh, talked about earlier on our flights, uh, which is not limited to things like that. You can do quite a bit. Things that can carry uh, fluids, like this is a sprinkler head, except for a screw, is pretty much all 3D printed. And then we can get into the more complex area with metals, where you basically can design things that you can't design currently due to manufacturing techniques. You can put holes where you can't drill holes in, in the way you uh, traditionally manufacture. And uh, that leads to, uh, in space, you could build things that only need to be used in space. So you can cut down quite a bit of the cost for the functionality, as well as uh, the material, which everyone knows is expensive to get out there. But uh, you basically can take gravity out of the mix when you're designing, which hasn't been able to be uh, accomplished yet as well as you don't need to have your, what you want to build checked out to survive a launch because it no longer needs to survive a launch, which is exceptionally beneficial for a lot of reasons. Uh, so this is our uh, payload in flight. Uh, we were kind of one of the only teams to use these straps that you see. We didn't uh, hard uh, bolt our experiment to the uh, fuselage and uh, you can just see the straps in the corners of the laser point would kind of be pointless. But uh, we also were smart and we automated our experiment as much as we could so that way we could have more time fun flying. We, mo we more, more or less monitored our, our experiment. And there was, there's uh, three printers in there. The, uh, there's a black box in the top and that's our own, we built a uh, 3D printer. There's a printer on the right which is called the MakerBot and then on the bottom is called the BFB. Uh, it's from Vice 3000. And, uh, the MakerBot was uh, was fun, but uh, so we, we flew uh, our own and two printers that we ended up modifying. We flew for uh, three flight uh, weeks, got about 400 parabolas and a lot of lot of, lot of zero g time, and uh, we ended up basically figuring out what modifications we need to make to have these off the shelf printers work in uh, zero gravity. So. So going into our uh, test objections and results, we're going to validate the extrusion-based printing in zero gravity works. There's several types of ways of 3D print. Uh, extrusion right now, extrusion-based printing is pretty much the only way you can go because you know, you know it doesn't require laying down a, power, a powder layer and then lasering things and then dusting the powder off, adding another layer, which in zero gravity is pretty much impossible at the moment. Uh, we're characterizing the performance and the accuracy of our, our process and use various machines. And we also wanted to raise the TRL level of our machine as well as the technology as a whole. So we tested three different machines that I talked about. Uh, we modified them heavily in some cases in order to uh, print. Uh, that includes not just hardware but software issues. Uh, our machine worked about as much as we thought it would, so that was actually worked better, which is really great. We got to, we had a chance after our two flights, our two flight weeks to get another one and we pretty much modified our machines based upon the previous week's data to perform relatively flawlessly, or at least predictably. So it was a really great experience in the fact that we got another chance to do that. Uh, we built and tested several parts. We analyzed uh, some under the microscope as well as uh, some tensile testing to see if the parts that we built as tests on the ground, how well they compared to the test in zero gravity. And, and we raised the TRL level to a, a five. <coughs> Excuse me. So our future is we're planning to do a suborbital flight. Uh, we're talking to uh, the uh, lab committee's program about that. And uh, we can pretty much fit any plane for us, or suborbital <coughs> spacecraft or space plane that's out there, uh, hopefully. But uh, right now, we the, the group we're launching with. So. And then uh, we got a, recently got an SBIR opportunity, which I'm the PI on and we are going to put a uh, manufacturing facility on the ISS in a few years that's going to be able to basically uh, 
perform science as well as keep the space station uh, upkeep as well as we can. We can replace things that need replacing in, in, in sometimes. Uh, depends on, it honestly depends on what breaks, but there's a lot of areas, we, it's been estimated, I uh, talked to some guys at Marshall, uh, that almost one third of the parts can be replaced with uh, the plastics or deposits that, that are on there. So we also have some ter terrestrial applications that will help print 3D printers on Earth become better, which makes the whole thing progress faster. We're doing some research and we're also do some work on advanced structures, how to take gravity out of the equation and still make structures that hold up uh, in the space environment. So, answer questions later, but thank you.